Up two possessions with 99 seconds left on the game clock after a Doncic drive and kick to Irving, Wiggins funnels Kyrie into the low man help of Green along with stunts of Curry and Pajemski. But this stance is 100% anchored by Draymond Jamal Green, who makes a full rotation onto Irving, forcing the pass to Gafford. Watch how Green then rotates in sync with Irving's pass before levitating for a swat on Gafford that's as clean as it gets. Plus on top of that, Draymond rips it away from Irving and saves it from going out of bounds. That stance from Dre was the best defensive play of the 2023-24 NBA season, in my opinion. Now three games ahead of Houston for the final play-in tournament spot, Andrew Wiggins dropping a team-high 23 on an off night for Stephen Curry, featured the dubs clamping up defensively against a fifth-seeded 15-game over 500, having won eight of their last 10-game Maverick squad. Full film breakdown of what went right against Dallas, followed by every crucial storyline for the Bay Area's ball club, including how they've been one of the best squads over the past few months, is on its way. Right quick, just 13.1% of my audience is subscribed, so please subscribe and splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm if you haven't already. Your support is greatly appreciated. Helping dig the dubs out of a 9-0 hole early was the Indiana Hoosier TJD, first setting this massive big body cross screen on Irving to free up Clay. Trace fakes this handoff to Clay to get Gafford off him just a tad bit before roaming into the paint off the bounce and utilizing his 33 inch standing vertical jump that measured sixth best at last year's draft combine to shock Gafford with a towering one handed jam. It's still bewildering how this man was the 57th overall pick. Three of Chris Paul's game high off the bench of 14 featured him gaining space off a high loon dog ball screen that turns out to be a Spain pick and roll. Out of another Spain pick and roll, the future Hall of Famer would then record a second straight field goal with this under control mid range step back and fall away J over Powell, the skill from the 11 time All NBA players off the charts. Chris Paul's shot creation, combined with the intensified hustle from Gary Payton the second in the passing lanes to trigger this four point swing, as well as tap out this Curry miss on the glass, which set up another Curry shot that he this time hit, and to cut back door on Irving, fueled the Warriors to a comfy 13 point advantage. However, as you may know, blowing leads has been a bad habit for this Warriors team, and we all saw how that habit formed right before our eyes. With careless basketball for the final 347 of the second, Steve Kerr's team gave up a 15-2 run over that span to close the quarter. Responding to the Mavs ultimately building up an 8-point lead to make it a 21-point swing, Andrew Wiggins would collect this Curry underhanded kickout for a must-have catch and shoot. After hitting a pair at the stripe to record 4 straight points, this possession saw Wiggins make it 6 straight with a fake drop step shimmy and post hook over Doncic. Turning the 6 upside down to a 9 now, the ninth straight Wiggins point was generated from a solid Curry screen where Andrew catches and drains the 3. Andrew driving and kicking to Moody to score or assist on 12 straight is followed by Wiggins backing down Hardaway, and this time faking the post hook before pivoting around for a left hander. Saw some people on Twitter saying this split stagger action which sees Moody relocate with heavy trailing pressure and fade away on the catch resembled Clay Thompson, hell of a shot from Moody and a clutch one to tie it up. Chris Paul would then get back to taking over, as a middle pick and roll lets Paul loose to release a high arc and mid-range fader over Gafford. That's just one level of Paul scoring though, as this high pick and roll sees Chris range out to show us another weapon in his bag by again getting switched onto Gafford, but this time hitting it over him from beyond the arc. CP's then the wing screener in this pistol action, which sees Pods ultimately get GP2 an opportunity with a savvy dish to the dunkers. Following threes from Thompson and Pajemski, the 12-time All-Star in Paul would then get back to bucket getting by collecting it in the short corner and making this pull up look easy. On defense, Paul and Looney trap Doncic out of this pick and roll, so Wiggins picks up Gafford while Looney picks up Washington, forcing a drive and kick to Irving, who Paul rotates onto, forcing the swing back to Doncic, who Thompson and Looney hustle out to, and after a Doncic entry, Wiggins is there for the deflection. That's the type of defensive effort we need to see every possession minute 1 through 48. Draymond's game ceiling rotations and rejection was heavily broken down to start this vid, but you have to love how he was hyped as hell after this all-time play, as well as how he scored out of a 5-1 pick and roll on the other end the very next possession. Dating back to January 30th, the Warriors have the most wins in the Western Conference with 22, as my channel's current main team has slowly but surely gotten back to their championship identity. What will it lead to? That's up in the air. 
A signature storyline from the Mavericks Warriors matchup was the officiating, which you never like to see. Dallas fans were rightfully upset with a few calls down the stretch, but so were Golden State fans, with Stephen Curry's continued lack of a whistle. First of all, how is this not a foul? Warriors Twitter user Terry Worst would use one of those frames to post several pictures of Stefan getting absolutely clobbered without a whistle. Do the refs have a vendetta against this man or something? Is it envy? I guess we'll never know. I mean, considering the just returned Joel Embiid got this soft ass call, but Curry didn't get any from this screenshot, proves there's at least some bias against Steph for whatever reason. Have shame. From a standings POV, just three games back of the number seven seed, if the Warriors can put Houston away to win six in a row, this would essentially end the Rockets' season and get fans and media focused on the Warriors potentially climbing into a higher position. However, the Dubs mindset, as mentioned in my last video, should remain in the aura of treating every game like a do or die, given it's still likely going to be a two or die. From an individual accomplishment perspective, with his 2,451st and second made career deep range bombs, KT overtook Kyle Korver to move into sixth place on the all time three pointers made list. Big ups to the legend from Los Angeles, California, in Clay Alexander Thompson. But the dubs need that consistency from KAT. For Andrew Wiggins, congrats to the former number one pick and thought of as draft bust for reaching 13,000 points. That's huge. After Andrew's 23 piece, Wiggins gave his take on Curry, saying, even when he's not scoring the ball, he's still the most dangerous person on the court. Wiggins would also credit Green by saying, Draymond's special, defensive mastermind, he's everywhere. Andrew's been stellar, but he'll face a tall task defending the up and coming shiftily fast, incredibly athletic and shooting capable Jalen Green in Houston, who's a nightmare to defend. The dubs need a big effort from Wiggs as well as everyone else on Jalen. Meanwhile, in the absence of Kaminga, who returns Thursday night in Houston, the development of JK's fellow 2021 draft pick Moses Moody shined through. Massive ups to Moses for stellar on-ball defense on Doncic. In terms of Kaminga's return, based off how Moody's performed in his absence and also considering how the team performed without him, Jonathan has to play a lot better within the offense and less sloppy. Shout out to Brandon Pajemski for recording what was tied for a team-high 10 rebounds to go along with 5 assists. While being a game high plus 17, it was Brandon's seventh game of recording 10 plus rebounds, tied for the most among rookie backcourt players in franchise history. Golden State's solid win over Dallas forced them to fight through adversity, consisting of a 9 0 Dallas run to open the game, a 19 0 Dallas run ranging from the second into the third, and a 13 2 Dallas run in the fourth quarter. With Curry not playing well, Wiggins and the bench were putting the team on their back, and while the Chase Center Arena vibes could still use some improvement, improvement, it was better aura in comparison to prior games for Warrior fans in attendance, but nothing compared to the old days in Oakland at Roracle. Let's see if San Francisco can start defending their home court consistently, but for Thursday night, it's all about starting right, staying poised, closing quarters properly, and playing with the lead properly if it comes to that on the road in Houston. Build better habits, have no mercy, and get on the plane feeling good. Why doesn't Curry get calls in your opinion though, and should he get more? Best answer gets next video's commenter shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by June 21st earn free merch. Today's shoutout goes to Wada Face, whose score prediction for the Mavs Warriors was 106-103 for the dubs, and the final score was 104-100. Appreciate every answer, your boy Dflo signing off, and I'll see you next video. Ha ha!